Hi, I'm Ollie, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Grand Canyon. So today we're going to have about six chapters. We're going to be talking to you about A, how it was created, um, the time periods, different rock layers in the Grand Canyon, fault systems, flora and fauna, and then overall a brief summary of what I talked to you about. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about what the layers of rock in the Grand Canyon tell us about its past and how the Grand Canyon more or less seemed to be and how it's represented through the rock layers. I hope you enjoy this video. To understand the Grand Canyon, we must first discuss the idea of plate tectonics and the Colorado River, which both together played a massive role in the formation of the Grand Canyon. So, we should start off by quickly under, uh, understanding what plate tectonics are and what, pl what, what I'm talking about when I say plates. Millions of years ago, there was an oceanic plate and a continental plate, and they came together, and then the oceanic plate came, went underneath, it subducted, and then pushed and pushed, creating this kind of lift in the continental plate, which caused two things to happen. A, it made the Rocky Mountains, and B, it uh, made the Colorado Plateau lift up. So, because the Colorado Plateau lifted up, this caused the Colorado River to start coming down. It had an angle to move now, so it was coming down quite fast, quite rapid. It was a strong, big river, which caused, over millions of years, this carving, the erosion, which created the Grand Canyon, this massive canyon that we see today. Okay, so right now we're in the Grand Canyon, and I'm going to give you a quick little uh, overview of the timeline of what's going on here, and we're going to actually walk up through it. So uh, we started all the way up the top there at the top of the canyon. Down at the bottom there, right at the bottom, is uh, probably the oldest point in the entire of the Grand Canyon. And uh, you progress up through the years until you get to the youngest stuff, which is all the way up there, or even right up there where you see those trees growing. And that's the youngest point in the Grand Canyon. And so I'm going to quickly uh, walk through what's going on from the bottom, and then in the middle part, and then the top, and uh, how that happens through history. And so first we're going to start off with the Cambrian era. So, the Cambrian period lasted for roughly 55 and a half million years. Organisms went from single-celled into complex cells with multi-cell organisms. Uh, mineralized orga organisms came into existence. Continents were dry and rocky because of a lack of vegetation. Um, temperatures were quite cold, but the average was roughly 7 degrees, which is higher than today, uh, the average today. At this time period, there would have been ice caps and glaciers everywhere. And at the end of the period, there would be warmer climates. Uh, eventually, the glaciers would have receded and melted a little bit, which would have caused sea level rise. Um, and then this trend continued into the Ordovician era, which I'll tell you about next. There were many marine plants, but not many land fossils discovered from the Cambrian period. Uh, arthropods and trilobites were dominant life forms in the ocean in the Cambrian. Uh, quick side note there, trilobites are part of the arthropod family. Before the Cambrian, the seafloor was covered in life, but then these burrowing animals came into the Cambrian uh, era, which came and then killed the small sea creatures at the bottom of the seafloor, which turned the seafloor to what it looks like today. Slightly. So that's the Cambrian, it's just kind of um, land regions coming into existence, kind of the earth is sort of forming into what it looks like today a little bit, that's what we kind of see in the Cambrian. Then next we have the Ordovician era. So. Um, Everything above the tropics was basically ocean, so the Ordovician was known for its marine invertebrate, um, and the Ordovician was diverse in marine life. So, during the Ordovician time period, Earth was basically just an ocean with not much um, land going on. It was Next, we move on to the Silurian period, where 60% of marine species were wiped out during this period. Um, during this period, we had jawed and bony fish, that existed during this time period, and we had stable and somewhat warmer temperatures, which would have caused glacial ice caps and glaciers to recede and melt, which would have caused a relative sea level rise. Next, we move on to the Devonian era, or Devonian period, which is named after Devon in England, where rocks from this period were first discovered. Um, so, there, in the Devonian, there were the first signs of adaptive radiation, um, which is evolution of life forms occurring on dry land. Several groups of plants grew roots and proper leaves. Um, the Devonian period was named 
um, the age of fish because of the amount of diversity among the fish in the Devonian era. Um, four limb vertebrates or tetrapods began adapting to land and walking um, as their pectoral and fins uh, began turning into legs. So we kind of have a little bit of evolution going on here where fish kind of become more land mammals. So we have reptiles now. So now we're going to talk about layers in the Grand Canyon and how these layers connect to the different time periods they were in. So first I'm going to quickly run through what the layers are, uh, what they're made of, and then I'm going to talk about how this correlates the time period that they're in. So we start off all the way at the bottom where you have the Precambrian schist and granite. Um, then you kind of work your way up into the Bright Angel Shale, the Moab Limestone, Redwall Formation, the Supai Group, Hermit Formation, the Coconino Sans, uh, Sandstone, the Toroweep uh, Formation, and the Kaibab Formation, which is right at the top. This was a marine setting in the ocean, and you can see that because of the limestone. And then, as you make your way up a little bit more, you're getting uh, into the younger period of that uh, time frame. Uh, still in the ocean, but you're getting into a more shallow bit there, all the way up until you get to this little band of trees, which is the shalier bits where it's uh, getting into a bit more of a land landscape rather than in the ocean. Then, as you make your way even a little bit further up, you see all these uh, thin layers, these bands going across. And what that is, is uh, more of a river ecosystem. On the side bit here, and all across there, is a really good example of a river system. Um, and you can tell because, well, this big block here is the big river part. And as is this block here, this block here, this block here, and this block here. And they're different systems at different times, all separated by this shaley bit, which is all this kind of sandy, kind of crumbly dirt stuff that you can see there. And so what would happen is you would have a river system in here and then eventually you'd have the dirt on top of it as this river system goes away and then again you get another flood of river on top which is this bit and then you have dirt again on top of that and then you go back into river and dirt and it's that you can see that the whole way down now this piece here is interesting uh, so you'll notice that it's thinner from here to here than it is from here to here and that is because this system is cutting into this mud here, which is why this is thinner than that. And you can also see that on the other side as well, or if you look right about in the middle there, you can see a uh, little curved down bit, which is the same thing. It's just cutting, like the, the river's cutting down into that uh, bit of sand beneath it. So right at the top there, when you're seeing the sand dunes, is a really dry part in Earth's history where basically everything was a desert and it's just huge deserts all across and you're seeing that as uh, kind of the top layer here but then right when you get up to the very very top there back where the trees are you're getting into more of a ocean uh, thing again uh, ocean period of time where it really starts flooding again back into ocean and then kind of more more modern day I say modern so not like in the last 10 years but more modern than 500 billion years ago, you're getting this whole canyon that cuts out because of a huge rivers that are coming down, really eroding this canyon, so you can see all the layers, and that's how you can tell what's been going on through time. Okay, so I've told you a lot about these different periods of time uh, layering in the side of the canyon, but uh, geology, which is what I'm doing right now, is kind of like being a detective, um, because you might have theories about different time periods or whatever, but you have to be able to prove your theory. So, for example, I'm telling you that this is limestone, and to uh, different ways to prove that something is limestone is, well, A, it's kind of like a bluey, gray, green, uh, eh, blue, green, gray kind of color, like that. Um, also, since uh, limestone is calcium carbonate, it fizzes when you put hydrochloric acid on it. Obviously, I didn't take that with me on a hike, So, but if you were in a uh, lab experiment, you could test that theory. And also, when you hit two pieces of limestone together, it kind of makes like a little bit of a dinging sound, like a little bit of a ringing, sort of like a bell.
So here, we'll we'll give that a go. That didn't work. <laughs> that sound. That's the sound of limestone clinging together, which is how you can tell if something is limestone or not. So again, it's just the blue, green, gray kind of color. The area currently circled in black used to belong up here with the red, but instead has actually dropped down here due to what's called fault, which I'm about to explain using this big rock in the Grand Canyon. Think of this here as a limestone level, and this is not limestone. This is that river bit you're talking, uh, you're seeing. So this limestone down here is on a different level to this uh, river bit. So this used to be connected up here, and then all of a sudden, one day it just breaks in the middle and falls down to the limestone bit and that's why this is on a different level to this even though these two are on the same time period so that's what you're seeing right there I'm going to briefly talk to you about depositional environments and flora and fauna and briefly what fossils are for those that don't know so depositional environment, sometimes called sedimentary environment, is a place where sediment is deposited. Um, hence depositional. So it's usually something like a stream or a river, uh, a lake or an ocean bed, or even sand dunes. So the layers of sediment provide useful information about geological history within an area. So if I'm, for example, in the Grand Canyon and I'm looking at the layer of sandstone, I can see that this layer probably, since it has so much sand, had sand dunes and things. And I also correlate that with the time period it was in. Say, so look, oh look, this time period also was all sand duny and stuff like that. So now we can see, because of the depositional environment of, like that there's sand there, we can tell that there's been a sand dune. Now, flora and fauna um, are part of a subcategory called biota. So, the fauna refers to the animals present in this current time, so that could be trilobites, that could be the mammals. Um, whereas flora refers to plant life, so just any plants in that time period. So the fossils in the red wall limestone that I was talking about uh, earlier in the Grand Canyon have crinoids, brachiopods, nautiloids, and various sponges which show that there was fauna and flora in the Grand Canyon. Um, in the supai group in the Grand Canyon, which was shallow oceans and muddy river, um, there are footprints of amphibians and crocodiles and a plethora of flora there. The Hermit Shale, the Coconino Sandstorm, and the Torawoot Foundation, the Kaibab Formation during the Permian Era displays fossilized winged insects, ferns, and cone-bearing plants, corals and mollusks, and shark teeth, which shows that there was evidence of sharks in the time period, showing that in this time period there was different sorts of animals and plants, flora and fauna, in River Delta or a muddy muddy river, um, such as the supai group. So we're looking at this um, ocean floor seabed piece of limestone and we actually found a crinoid and that's the trunk that you're seeing right there and you can see how that trunk can come off of something that's similar to that image of the crinoid I'm showing you right now and that, that there is a crinoid that we actually found a fossilized crinoid in the Grand Canyon which I thought was kinda cool. Um, now briefly what are fossils? So fossils are actually just preserves of an animal from prehistoric time. So um, they're kind of a mold or a cast in the rock of the petrified version of an organism. Okay, so this marks a bit of a transition phase between the uh, layers where it was all river, now into the dunes. So as you can see, we're in the uh, more beigey, uh, sand-colored area. Uh, this behind me is a big piece of uh, dune that you're seeing. So what you're seeing in here is all these different layers of windswept sand that has then hardened and then formed another layer on top. So this is this line here is the bottom of one of the dunes and this is another one. This is another one and this is another one. It just keeps going up with all the big major cracks and that's where the wind would have come through to uh, sweep these big dunes and so all these little lines are all the different layers of sand on top. Uh, also you can get it, so all the way up there, you can also see the uh, uh, layers coming uh, sideways across and uh, the word is, I think it's called, uh, is it cross? Cross, what is it? 
bedding. Cross bedding. There you go. So this is called cross bedding because these little layers, you would call them beds, they're uh, sand beds or layer beds or whatever, and uh, they're crossing over each other. And uh, where's a good example? As you can see, like, yeah, here, down here, you can see that there's these are diagonal here, and then these ones come in here, and then there's some that come in like different directions, so they can come in from all different directions, which is called cross bedding. So thank you so much for watching my little uh, journey through time in the Grand Canyon. So uh, just a quick recap. You'll remember it starts at the very bottom on the ocean, makes its way up into the kind of uh, shalier bits where it was more muddy. Then it makes its way up into river systems, back uh, then into sand dunes where you see the big uh, beige bits there. And then back where I'm standing again on this limestone, which is back into a marine environment, which you can tell uh, that it's limestone because of the color, the sand, and the uh, different things living inside of the limestone. For example, like I was talking about the crinoids. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Bye.